Ladies, good afternoon. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And just to let people know, I have a wonderful panel with me here today to discuss future customer services involving your business and how do we develop it in the future. So joining me today, I have Tamilla from Juice Plus, I have Holly from Sensi, and I have Joe from The Body Shop, which is great. And I'm delighted, delighted to be joined by you all. And I know we'll have some really, really good topics of conversation here. But for me, I'm, I'm fascinated about customer care because I just think it's gonna be so different as we move forward. And I think the one thing I'm suspecting who, a, who is the customer? Actually, is it our consultants? Is it our people? Is it what we do? Or is it the end consumer of the product? And I think for our industry, we probably actually, from a corporate perspective, have two customers, uh, which I think is very interesting. And from a DS perspective we certainly have our members who are customers our suppliers who are customers but then underneath there we have the actual you know the physical retail customer that's purchasing and then obviously the customer that is the consultant who's sort of you know in that same brand so very very interesting but I think where this starts to get um, more exciting now is that is it the customer experience versus customer service versus customer care and actually if we break down what customer care is it's really just the way that we describe how people are treated when they interact with the brand and that customer journey that they go on that takes them from one point right the way through and that hopefully we make that amazing that they only re repeat that or they go on and recommend but it's such an important part because it fosters the emotional connection with that brand if you you know I'll know if I've gone and bought something even if I love the product if the care and the, the due diligence around that purchase wasn't great now there's so many other touch points I can go and buy that from it's very easy for me to say do you know what I'm not going to do that again I'm not going to so I think it's one of the hottest buzzwords in business these days I believe under the pandemic we've had to get smart at customer care because we haven't had that retail interaction where people can wander into a shop and feel loved we've we've lost that ability you know especially when we're buying some of the products that you guys you know sell that how do you smell something how do you test the makeup how do you really interact with that and we've we've lost the ability to do that so I think the customer care element around that just becomes so much more important um, and so much more interesting so uh, so yeah so I think according to a recent study um, that people most most co top corporate brands are putting over 20% more into their budget now to manage customer care. So I think this, you know, the pandemic's really shown us that actually people are a little bit more um, whimsical about where they shop. And I think they've changed habits and how they change those back are going to be really interesting. So I'm really excited about hearing how you guys have, have dealt with customer care, not only in the past, over the past kind of 18 months of bizarreness, but also looking forward to the future. So, um, uh, so yeah, so um, Trina, let me kick off with you, please, please, please. Let, let me know what you guys have been doing. Thank you so much, Susanna, and happy to be invited. It's actually an area that I'm pretty much very passionate about. And I think the reason behind it is that for us in Juice Plus, we do treat both customers and our partners as our customers. So we have direct connection to a customer at all times, and we have a direct connection to a partner. So I think in, in our industry, the important part is this relationship management of this kind of a triangle. And I think, um, what we've seen and what is changing a lot is probably the um, empowerment of customers, like customers require quite a lot of ownership of this relationship. And uh, for us, it's important also to honor our partners who are doing an amazing job, finding customers, uh, supporting them, for, uh, achieving their goals. And I think what we've learned probably um, around the recent years, and I've been consulting with our fantastic service center team as well, um, is that people probably demand quite a lot of transparency. So communication is a key. So whatever it has to do with deliveries, with content, with ingredients, um, all of that is a bigger demand. Um, people want to know what they're consuming, if it's ethical. We've got um, amazing questions coming through from our customers, including um, where was, for example, certain types of ingredients sourced and were any animals damaged or how does it impact environment so much more environmentally friendly we are very proud obviously to be able to supply that information but those kind of demands are new i think when it comes to communication uh, again 
gender neutral uh, pronouns um, important. Uh, again, something that probably we didn't train our customer care agent five years ago. Now it's super important, like, okay, people become sensitive. Exactly what you mentioned probably Suzanne before uh, about the names. Um, we have very wide variety and diverse uh, field in UK, which we are very proud of, but it also adds some requirements on language which we believe we try to maintain as much as possible due to the fact that we have a European uh, service centre in um, London, actually. So we could manage that and we could support them with different languages, but that's definitely an interesting development. When it comes to the journey, and I think, as you said, it's a buzzword, um, people speak, speak about journeys, but I think um, we are not alone creating this journey. We're doing it together with our partners. And I think this kind of coordination is important what we've learned is a lot of things that go in from the company needs to have partners involved and i think we managed to convert our ways of purchasing um to customer to make sure that they feel um that everything is transparent they are safe the payment is going directly to the company but at the same time have the partner interaction so that was a big change actually when it comes to customer journey with payment regulations that um, kind of started changing the environment around 2019. And the payment regulations require much more of customer involvement, taking ownership of each payment, confirming it. We have the subscription model as well, which requires them to be up to date. So we have a, a very cool couple of ways of um, making orders. It's your personal card, so the partner can create the card suggest it specifically for that customer, personalize it, send it away, and then customer can check out, putting all the sensitive information in. So that helped a lot to have that kind of um, very fluent journey for the customer. And I think uh, probably another thing is big thing that is happening, but it's not so new, right? It's social media. But I think a lot of companies are, or at least, my perspective and my experience with some of the retail companies, people go to social media to complain, right? It's like, okay, I'm going to tag them on Twitter if I didn't get my ticket sorted, right? So, and I think for us, it's much more of a conversation. So we have those Facebook customer pages and we have our service center being present there, which is super important to respond to comments, to respond to direct messages. Um, and Trustpilot is another platform. And uh, like, if you think about Trustpilot, it didn't exist some years ago. It didn't have that relevance, but at the moment, um, anyone wants to buy something, they go and check. Um, so we are putting quite a lot of effort to make sure that we are providing feedback from the company perspective to people on external platforms as well. And this presence is required more and more. And I think from our partner's perspective, and I kind of started with customers and now going to the partners a bit quickly, um, it seems that I wouldn't even call it a customer service because it's much more approachable relationships. And we are with them in all kinds of WhatsApp channels, Telegram broadcast lists, a Facebook, um, and that is a very fluent communication at all times. And People don't want to go and receive information only through email. Um, they don't want to get notifications that they don't understand. So it needs to be kind of explained, visual, easy to connect. And we've learned that basically Facebook actually helps a lot, even though our demographic is shifting quite a lot to Instagram. Um, but those two are our biggest social networks with partner interaction focus. So. I think I would probably stop there and let the others also get their um, thoughts on the table because it's, we can speak forever about this. I'm just saying that it's quite interesting development, a lot of things happening, but I've tried to capture the most significant ones. No, Tamila, thank you. It's amazing. And as you say, it's, I think we could talk for hours on this literally, mm -hmm. because I think it's one of those topics that's never ending. And I think the weirdly for me, customer service, customer care, customer experience, whatever we call it, is something that will never stand still. It can't. You have to keep evolving with how people want to purchase and you have to keep delivering that. So, um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not something you work in and just go, do you know what? We've nailed this people. Let's just sit back and let it all happen. Is it? It's not. So that's fascinating. So Joe, over to you. Tell us what you guys have been up to. Oh, well, I, on that note, I'd love to say we've nailed it and that's it. We're done. <laughs> but unfortunately not. No, as you say, it's a constantly evolving um, 
topic. And I think, you know, in the given circumstances, we've had to be even more agile and, and more adaptable to what's needed really in order to, to maintain a really high level of customer service. So at the Body Shop at Home, because of the, the circumstance over the last two years with lockdown, et cetera, but also because we've seen such exceptional growth, we've had to make some significant changes to the way we do manage our kind of customer service piece and, and still constantly strive for that excellence in customer service. And probably the first thing we've done is really look at technology. So the whole piece around digital digitalization, um, making sure that you know we're introducing new um, methods for customers to, to interact with us. We're hoping to, to, to go down the route of things like WhatsApp. We're increasing the use of live chat. Um, we're looking at new general core systems that help customers to have a much more efficient experience, whether they're placing an order or they're asking for some help with something. So we've enhanced our knowledge base so that the consultants can ask questions very quickly, any time of day, day or night. Because I think people's lives have changed so much recently that that's what we've, we've had to make sure that if a, if a customer's got a question at 11 at night and our care centre is closed, that our knowledge base can potentially provide a lot of those answers. So really the 24 seven piece has been important. And to make sure that customers are getting that really speedy, really efficient, um, service and, and where possible that they can self-serve and using much more kind of um, personal websites for the consultants so that customers can order directly. Again, if they're co consultants offline, the customer can place the order themselves. So that's kind of been the first thing that we've done has really been around the technology piece. The second thing has been around training. So the key thing we've looked at here is um, Partly, I think, as Tamila said, the inclusivity. So making sure we really reframe our, our training so that it's incredibly inclusive and, and takes into consideration all diverse needs. But the other thing we've done is, um, you know, you've probably seen not just for Body Shop, for a number of organizations and just general trends around self-love and well-being. So we've adapting our training really to make sure that selling is done with that in mind so that the customer experiences some active listening some empathy to what's going on with their life at the moment. And that will enable us to sell products that are potentially genuinely enhancing their life, not just being sold to the customer because it's a current bestseller or the consultant believes it's fabulous, but actually it's tailored to the customer's needs. Um, and that's been really, really key. So it's kind of personal and relevant training. And, and the other thing on training to mention is just, you know, consultants are used to being able to answer questions face to face at parties. So now if somebody asks a question on Facebook, on, on a chat or on a live with a comment, how do you train that consultant to be able to answer that in a really clear and succinct way that's well worded, that's really positive, even if it's a challenging question. Um, so helping them to understand how best to answer queries, but in a more social media style. Um, so that's been the key thing on training. And the final thing I just wanted to mention was really around how we're trying to gather more feedback. So not making the assumption that we know we're getting this right, not making the assumption that um, we're delivering the right things, but we've launched an always on survey. So consultants can take feedback from their customers and they can complete that survey and they can complete it time and time again if things are changing or they're encountering things they want to, to share with us so that they have a voice. We're then able to take the feedback from that survey. And uh, we've also in, in, uh, introduced a leavers survey too. So people who are dropping off our system, becoming inactive, we're going to them straight away and asking them, what, what were the issues for you? Um, did your customers have any feedback? Were there problems for you that we couldn't solve? And, and what, what could we do differently? What could we do better? So really by asking those questions, um, we're able to make further changes and, and enhance whether it is the technology or the training um, and pick up on any key trends of where we're not getting it right. Yeah. So, no, yeah. that's, that's amazing. And I think there's one key thing I wrote down here was that 24 seven and you're right. I think the strange thing is, although we were so used to working in offices and retail being open at certain points and although weirdly actually retail and the purchasing of goods, which obviously this sector looks after so much, as much as that was actually always quite flexible with your online shopping, I think we've changed everything into being 24 seven now. Yeah, so for some absolutely. reason, although you could buy all the time, you'd expect actually only to be able to complain or talk to a customer service partner between those office hours. But now actually we just want to do everything all the time because the world's are upside down, they've changed. And we think, oh, do you know what? I'll do that this evening because then tomorrow I don't have to be here. And exactly. we're not in an office anymore. So it's that strange anomaly, isn't it? That I think has really changed how people want to interact. And, you know, as you rightly say, picking up from um, 
from um, you know earlier comments as well. It's that it's that real moment of um, how do we take social media and utilize it positively, but without it coming back almost you know to attack us as well. Because you know you take yeah. to Twitter, um, uh, you know as Tamila said, you take to Twitter and all of a sudden everyone's like, that's how I'll get my problem solved. Um, and you want to use it positively, and I understand when frustrations as a consumer take you there. But actually, it's what what safeguarding do we put around those processes to make sure it's a positive experience? So thank you, Joe. That's fascinating. Holly, over to you. Last but definitely not least. <laughs> Thank you so much it's you know what this is such an interesting conversation it just shows that there are so many sort of parallels between um between companies really and i think across the industry 2020 just will forever go down in history books as a defining year and essentially obviously was part of that i think many businesses had to adapt and some had to shift their models and even product offerings dramatically for some uh, luckily for sensi we had a consistently relevant offering but now as even more it was even more prevalent um the showcase of products that we had and it became a necessity for so many uh with the time spent at home increasing exponentially uh and the importance of our nests being uh, as best as they could be within our means, especially when it came to home fragrance, evidently. Uh, Sensi luckily didn't have to change our course completely, but we did have to pivot and really flex up our digital experience like so many others. And our consultants really led the way with evolving and refining the service there for their customers and Sensi supported them as best we could through that. Um, so in answer to the question, there was a real two-pronged approach. Sensi led the evolution of the consultant experience and how that impacted the customer. And then the consultants really spearheaded the evolution of customer services um, service themselves. Um, so from a Sensi perspective, it was really centered around, as Jamila said as well, increasing that transparency on key issues like product availability, shipping, and providing more support and communication to our consultants to really better serve them in accordance with the challenges we all face uh, during COVID-19. Uh, Sensi saw unprecedented growth in 2020, as did so many others, but it wasn't all rosy. I think product availability and support functions weren't pre-prepared. I don't know who was, uh, but we had to bolster that during the pandemic uh, with the complexities that we're all experiencing of Brexit as well. Um, expanded again as uh, joe said about consultant support those teams those support functions we expanded those uh in in terms of humans as well as the time and availability of the of that group uh and the communication as well from senior leadership and home office uh, became more direct and more often and more consistent with our top leaders uh, and the rest of the incredible consultant base uh, we communicated through it through Facebook lives, virtual events, and our consultant news platform as well. So we were doing those things already, but it was about increasing the transparency and the regularity of those things. Um, stock and availability is the essence of good customer service as well as communication. So it was really challenging. However, with the transparency, as I said, of regularly updated product availability lists and also utilizing some quite new to us tactical launch mechanisms and really strong injections of energy uh, with pre-sales, second chance offers, consistent limited time product offerings and really simplifying our checkout process as within our means. It enabled Sensi to really service the consultant and the customer as best we could with the uncertainty around us as well. Um, this year in Sensi Europe, very exciting, uh, Sensi celebrated 10 years, that's the UK and Germany specifically. Uh, so with that, we launched a European Instagram profile to really, again, support the consultants, quite genius social media efforts, really. And they really did lead the, lead the way that we wanted to support them with that. So now from a consultant perspective, we watched and learned so much as I know you guys probably did as well from our consultants. As a party plan company, there was a big shift towards digital channels in an effort to really bridge the absence of in-person interaction. Uh, the consultants call it customer care as you did at the top as well, Susanna, and they really care for their customers and really wanted to maintain the level their customers had got used to and loved prior to, to COVID. Consultants generally, they poured so much more into their customers. It became 
even more important for consultants to show how much the customer was appreciated and cared about. And I think that was what stood them apart. Start from retail, maybe samples were sent, virtual games were played, happy posts were distributed, uh, surprise and delights in orders, the small gestures the consultants made. It really spread that sensi culture, sort of our corporate culture, but it spread much wider than just that transactional relationship. It was around kindness, appreciation, and really distraction of what was going on around us, of which consultants have adopted and continue to lean into and to really care for their, for their loyal consultant base. Um, so just in conclusion, Sensi evolved the service provided to consultants uh, in order for them to better serve their customer. And that was through transparent, as clear as possible, as up to date as possible, and as regular as possible communication, especially with top leaders, top leaders, while really flexing up alternative marketing and sales options to deliver to the customer. And then the consultant did many things, but two key things stood out to me. Uh, they evolved the already impeccable service they offered their customers by sort of rebranding it to customer care and really thinking of who was behind the text, the order, the virtual door, uh, and the impact the pandemic had on everyone. And the other thing is they pivoted their communication and connections with people from in-person to online, but without at all compromising on the personal touches and the authenticity required to be a Sensi consultant. Just, just really quickly, one of Sensi's mottos is contribute more than you take. And I think that flows through everything we do, the culture we live by at home office, and that just flows through our consultant teams too. And sort of the other half of your question was the future. And I think the fundamental of customer service or customer care at Sensi is give more, more than you take. And it's, it's truly not just transactional. I love that contribute more than you take is brilliant and I think I think we do I think the world would be a better place if everybody just lived under that motto moving forward didn't they you know the DSA have done a uh, done a campaign that we don't want to go back to normal we want to go forward to better once all of this is over and I think we can really set ourselves those standards to say actually we've learned so much but I think ladies it's been it's been amazing but I think just to summarize to bring it all together is that Forbes released a survey recently saying that um those those companies that took customer care seriously normally had a profit of over you know an engaged profit of over 30 percent increase in the times that they'd invested so I think as human beings now we're slightly more careful about where we spend our time and our money and I think that's you know that's why I love this sector I love hearing about what consultants are doing and they go above and beyond but we live in a digital world now everybody expects everything 24 7 i think the old sales pyramid of the pareto principle 80 percent of your business comes from you know 80 percent of your revenue comes from 20 percent of your customers i think has been destroyed in this pandemic i just don't believe that exists anymore i think we all shop so differently we're all you know completely diverse now and it will be so interesting to see how this whole customer care digital plays out moving forward you know, will we still do this or will we actually get together and have the debate in front of a camera Live together and I I think that's yet to be seen how we uh, you know how we pull it all together but I think for me there's three words that came out of that adapt and I think this sector adapted amazingly and supported some incredible incredible opportunities um, I think it pivoted which I love that word you know you can't stand still you had to do but not only did the organizations and our member companies pivot actually I think all of those that work within the sector just thought how do I help and not because they were greedy and they wanted to make money because they wanted to help and I think the differentiator there is enormous and I, I as well you know it's why I champion in this sector so much uh, thirdly it's evolving you know, I, I remember when we first went into lockdown I put my head in my hands and was like well we're a social selling business we might as well close the doors now and how naive of me to not realize that all of the consultants that work for the companies amazing companies like yourselves didn't roll their sleeves up and say right how do we innovate? How do we change? And how do we make darn sure we support our network and all of our customers moving through this? And I think the entrepreneurial shit through this period has been phenomenal. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me. We could go on and on and on. I certainly could. It's a topic we've only scratched on. I think we should come back and do this again in a few months time so we can touch on what we've learned moving forward as the world opens up. And you know, are we predicting correctly or is everyone just gonna rush out and do things, do crazy things? So, um, so it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you very, very much indeed for joining me and um yeah let's uh, let's see what happens but thank you thank you thank, thank you, so you.